I'm going to do a complete walkthrough of how I shoot my point of view mountain bike videos because I seem to be getting a lot of questions about them. I'm going to be walking you through how I shot the video that's on the screen playing now, which is a question I get a lot on my point of view videos. I've been on a mission now for the past few years to try and make my content with 360 cameras look as realistic as possible because I just know the capability of a camera like this, which is my new favorite at the minute, Insta360 X3. I'm trying to learn as much as I can about the cameras and I've learned a lot in the last year or so, or in the last six months since this camera has been launched actually, on how to shoot videos, where to mount the camera, and then obviously how to, to edit the 360 footage because it's a little bit different than just editing uh, a normal like single lens camera footage. I want to do a walkthrough tutorial of how I edit my videos and hopefully this can help you guys achieve like a similar looking result. And it's probably worth pointing out before we do this video, just to show you where I mounted the camera. I used a Nartec mount, which there'll be a link on the screen or in the description where you can grab one of these. This is just this little mount that goes in the front of my full face helmet here. So it's nice and small, it's made of metal. It's not gonna go anywhere, it's real strong, real sturdy. This is one of the best ways to get point of view videos on a mountain bike or a motorcycle or something like that. You can obviously mount the 360 camera wherever you want to get some really unique angles. But for the video I just showed you, this is the mount that I used on a helmet. And you can use Wolf 20 to get 20% off anything on nartech.com. Okay, so let's jump over to the tutorial. So I'm over my computer now, and before we jump into this, we need to download a plugin. So I'm gonna be showing you this tutorial with Premiere Pro, and we're gonna to need to install this plugin, which is GoPro FX Reframe. So simply go to the links in the description to grab this and download it for your Mac or your Windows computer, and then install it. And then once we have our 360 footage, so we're gonna open that up first, in Insta360 Studio because there's like a preliminary step that we need to take before we open and start editing our 360 videos. And once we've decided on the segment of video we wanna use, we wanna export this and we wanna click 360 video here. And I usually go for a bit rate of about 40, keep the encoding format the same and we're gonna export that. Now while that's exporting, I'll just give you the reason why we're doing this. When you get your 360 files off your camera when you've finished shooting, you can't just open them directly in Premiere Pro. You have to do this step to convert it into an octo rectangular image, I think it's called. Okay, so that's exported now. We're gonna open this. You'll see here it's a .mp4 file, which is what we want. And you'll see if I open this now, it will come out looking very strange. But this is what we want. We're gonna open Premiere Pro. So I'm in Premiere Pro now, I'm gonna click New Project, and we are going to click Create, and replace that. And this is the, the dashboard, what you'll be met with. Premiere Pro is quite new to me for editing. I usually use Final Cut Pro, and I generally use Premiere Pro mainly just for editing 360 videos, because I think it's a really good workspace, and it's very capable. So first of all, we're gonna to want to import our media. So, what we're gonna do is we're gonna drag our newly created video into here. And you'll see it'll show up here. And then we want to drag it from here into our timeline. And you'll see it will show up and start doing all sorts of cool stuff. So this is our video here. And if you are at this step now, you should have already installed GoPro FX Reframe. So you need to do that before you do any of these following steps, just to put that there. Now, we're gonna create a video for social media. So we need to have our video ready for like portrait mode or video style footage. A vertical style footage, sorry. So what we wanna do is, we wanna click sequence and then sequence settings. And we wanna change the frame size, okay? The time base here, you want this to be at whatever frames per second that you shot this at. Now the video I shot at was 24 frames a second. If you shot at 30 frames a second, then you wanna put 30 or whatever it is that you shot at. Frame size, I would change this to, well, if we're doing something for social, say an Instagram Reel or a TikTok video, we want this to be 1080 by 1920, which is your typical nine by 16 aspect ratio. I always check these boxes here, which is under video previews box. So we want to maximum bit depth and we want maximum render quality. So this is just making sure that we can export in the highest quality possible. We're gonna click enter. We're gonna click okay. And you'll see there that our aspect ratio on the screen here will change straight away. So this is matching what we've just created. 
Now we're gonna add the GoPro FX reframe, reframe plugin to our footage. So in the effects tab, tab here, we're gonna search GoPro FX reframe, click enter. And under video effects, you'll see, if you've installed it correctly, you'll see GoPro FX reframe. And we're gonna drag this onto our footage. And then you'll see straight away that we get all this lovely editing material effects to control. So what we're gonna do is, we're gonna go through this first and show you what each of this does. We want to select and toggle on all these animations. And the reason we're doing this is because when we, when we change a keyframe or the angle of a keyframe, which I'll show you in this video, you want everything to change in sync. Okay, this will all make sense, so don't worry if you're getting lost or anything like that. You'll see what I mean in a second. We're also going to change the projection here to whatever our uh, source, whatever we want to create, sorry. So for us, it's going to be social 9x16. Remember the sequence sends we created before, we want to match that. And then as soon as we click on GoPro FX reframe here, you'll see that we've got a lot of boxes around our footage. And this is basically our editing tools, okay? So we can move our camera around. So if we click and drag inside this square here, you'll see we can start reframing our footage to where we want things to do, to be, sorry. And you'll see the rectangles down the side here. If we pull up or down on this, this will actually rotate our footage. There we go. If we pull left or right on the bottom of the top rectangles, you'll see that we can zoom in and out. That's zooming in, zooming out, getting some more field of view in there. And then you'll see these squares in the corner. If we drag these out away from the center of our video, you'll notice we can add some lens distortion. So obviously if you go too far, it'll start to look a bit weird, but you, you can have a play around with that and see what you want. I just need to take a quick break because there's somebody at my door. Sorry about that, just a big bike delivery that's just turned up. Okay, so where were we? So lens distortion, yep, have a play around with that. And you know, this is so customizable, it's ridiculous. And what we want to do is, well, from when, it was, when it comes to my mountain biking, we want to try and keep the perspective of the handlebars and the horizon in the same shot or same image. You might hear my dog walking around at the minute. And one thing I actually forgot to do here actually, um, you wanna click sync keyframes, okay? So basically when we make a, uh, a change, so if we play the video now, we obviously wanna move the camera and reframe things based on where I'm actually going down the trail. We're obviously gonna to need to add a keyframe. And when we click sync keyframe, this will sync all these selected uh, options here and add, add another keyframe basically. And we're gonna reframe this. I'm gonna put it right here. You see that it's added a keyframe onto all these items that are selected here. And the advanced controls here, X and Y offset, so you can actually move your frame left and right just to reposition things, but we're not gonna go into that in this video for now. We're gonna, add another, we're gonna play it again, add another keyframe. Okay, so what I like to do on, on when, when you're going down a trail and we have like motion happening, so for instance, we're going around berms or corners, I like the camera to follow where I'm going. And to, to achieve that, we set a keyframe by just clicking our tracking pad at the start of the berm, so here, and then we want one at the end of the berm. So we're gonna reframe at the end of the berm, end of the corner, and now we have a keyframe at the start and the end of the berm. So you can see that it starts to add all these keyframes in. And if we rewind it, I'll just give you an, a demo of what it looks like so far. Okay, there we go, it's starting to come together. You can see there we need do the same here, so we'll click, add a keyframe, fast forward a little bit to the end of the berm or the end of the turn, and then we'll reframe. And you can get literally as 
detailed as you want with this to really customize the look of your videos. So we can zoom right out, so we've got a bit more field of view. Editing 360 videos isn't for everyone because it takes a long time. But I feel if you're willing to put the work and the effort in, you can really, really get some immersive footage with these bloody awesome cameras. So I'm fairly happy with that. This is just like a demonstration to show you what to do here. I also like clicking this motion blur button as well and adding this to all the keyframes. Motion blur, what it does is it obviously adds a little bit of blur between the transitions of the keyframe. So as, as your camera is moving between the different keyframes that you set, the motion blur just kind of like makes that a little bit more seamless and like not like as robotic. And talking of that, we can actually work on the smoothness of the transitions between our keyframes. So what we can do is we can highlight all of our keyframes by just clicking and dragging like this and we can double tap on the trackpad and we've got all these options here. At the minute it's linear, set to linear, so it'll, it'll almost just bounce between the keyframes. But if we click continuous bezier, that kind of smooths out the transitions between the keyframes. So you can see it's very smooth how the camera moves. And you can get even more in depth with this if you want. So you can actually click this drop down arrow next to these options here. And you can see here we've got all these different waves and stuff and we can start pulling these around to smooth things out or steepen the curves on the, uh, the velocity of the transitions. But I'm not gonna get too in depth on that in this video. So once you're happy with your footage, it's time to export it. So we're gonna click the export button here and don't be alarmed by all this. I'll show you exactly what to do. There, there are only really a few things you need to worry about or need to think about. I usually keep the format here, H.264, just as it is there. If you want to upload to say TikTok or Instagram or YouTube, whatever, I think that's the best way of coding things. We're gonna drop down this menu here under video. We're gonna keep all this the same. I'm gonna click more. I'm gonna check these boxes, render at maximum depth, use maximum render quality. And then there's one part we wanna look for, which is the, the target bit rate, okay? Now, you can bump this all the way up to 50, it looks like, but I'm gonna keep this at 40 because that's what we initially imported the video at. I just think having a higher bit rate just enables you to have higher quality video footage when you are encoding to places like Instagram or TikTok where they're like renowned for like compressing your footage. Same it goes for this section here, so bit rate encoding. I basically have to like to have a BBR2 pass on there. Basically, uh, the actual encoding process happens twice when it's exporting. I couldn't really give you the actual details, but I just think it looks a little, a little bit better in my opinion, but you can have a play around with it. And then we simply just click export and then it'll do its thing. So that's a basic beginner tutorial on how I edit the 360 videos from my Insta360 X3 camera in Premiere Pro and uh, the, the Insta360 Studio. Uh, I hope this was useful. I really do enjoy creating 360 videos and trying to figure out these cameras even more and get better at my craft and learning how to use them better so I can get more immersive videos like this. Because I really think you can make the footage look 10 times better than it actually comes across on like a flat camera, like a single lens camera. So if you've got any questions on 360 shooting or the editing process I've gone into here, or if you'd like me to do more advanced stuff like this, then please let me know. Happy to help you out and happy shooting. See you in the next video.